I, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. As I promised, I'm going to be making cards with the small envelopes that I got from my friend, and I'm going to show you how to make envelopes yourself without any tools at all, and how easy it will be to make these cards yourself. I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, I hope you can see the length of this, but this is a normal business size envelope that you would send in the mail with bills or whatever. And um, so I thought it'd be fun to make a, a card that has envelopes attached to the front and each one says open. And the first one says, so sorry. The second one says, we missed. And the last one says, your birthday. And now we're going to I'll show you how to do that and then in the inside I glued one of the frames that my friend sent me. I thought that kind of offset it and I I didn't know what to do to add to take up more room. So I put the paper in there. I, I'm not crazy about the paper but you know once it's in there you're committed. So that's one of them that's done and it's envelope. So uh, we'll do the other one and the other one's going to be more girly and it's hopefully going to be easier because now I've got the hang of the tying the, the how to tie it to make it work because that was the tricky part trust me when I tell you that so our card base is sorry I in the excitement I forgot to tell you that is nine and a quarter tall and I think it's four inches across it's four inches across so it's eight inches by nine and whatever I just said, nine and a quarter. That's the, the the size of this, so it fits into our envelope. Here is the paper pad I'm using. It's from Paper Studios, and it had lots of fun pinks and blues. So I made one card for a man and one that I'm making for a woman. I don't need the card right now. We're going to make our envelopes. Now I know that we thought the envelopes that um, I got from. Rhonda were small. Okay, this is the size I had to cut it down. This is the size I need. This is the smallest envelope I had. So clearly, this isn't going to work. So what I wanted to do is show you. Um, I based this envelope size. This is, I think it's two and a half by two and a half, but I'll make sure two and three quarters by two is really what it is. And um, the reason I made it that size was I printed these out on my computer in a bunch of different fonts and a bunch of different sizes in the fonts so that you could see my game plan on this. This is so sorry we missed your birthday. And I found that this font looked best, oops, the size of it, on this size cardstock and I'll show you what I mean once we get further into this then I have a paper punch that punches out these little I guess they call them price tags I've never done any price tags but they're great for things like this where you have to put a little direction on something and I only need to make one of those just to show you and the direction I have a stamp set that May May makes it's called the action stamp set and the word I wanted was open clearly and I'm using Gina K's blue denim ink look I use one of my perfect layering circles from rubber stamp tapestry the peg stamp people the one um, I don't know if you don't know this story they came out with uh, five different sizes of circles and the reason they did it was I had asked them is it possible that you could send me some different sizes of circles so I could try them out. Well, I tried them out and sent them a couple cards and said, I love these. I think people would really like them. And they made them and they're selling them. I'm thrilled. And Rebecca, one of the owners, I uh, just talked to her a couple days ago and she said that people are really liking them and I could not be happier. So I'm just going to stamp on my little tags the word open. That way, if they don't, you know, like some people might think that the envelope is just a decoration and it doesn't say something in it, but ours is going to have something in it. So we'll put those three aside. I don't want to lose those. And I'll have to punch a hole in those two, and I'll show you that when I do that because I like to make sure you understand how I do everything if you've never seen me do it. Now, 
if you've never made your own envelope, it's very, very, very simple, simpler than you can believe. You're going to take whatever size that you want your envelope to be. And like I said, this is just my prototype. It's not really an envelope. It's part of an envelope I cut up. You're going to take your ruler and you're going to place your ruler from side to side like that. This is telling me that I need about three and a half inches. Do you see that? So you want to add one inch to that. So you're going to have a three and a half inch plus one inch makes a four and a half inch piece. You'll want to make a square of your cardstock four and a half inches. So I'm just going to take my little handy dandy paper trimmer here. And weirdly enough, these papers are six and a half by four and a half, so I only have to cut one one side of them and we're good to go. How lucky is that? I had to cut this down a couple times because the first couple times I did, I was like, what's the deal? My paper's not long enough. My envelopes were a little bit bigger and I just kept having to cut down my envelopes because for some reason I didn't realize that this paper was um, four and a half inches. That's not big. So that kind of messed me up. Don't get rid of these because we're going to need those. Actually, we might as well do that now too and I'll show you what I did with these. Back to the paper cutter that I completely forgot I needed. You're going to take your little envelope and I just, this is what, this is how I do it. I just kind of put it up here and I see that it's about, um, it's a little under two and a half inches. Or, excuse me, it's a little bit under two and three quarters inches. So I'm going to make these two and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to put them in my trimmer, put them at two and a half, whack them off. Those are good to go. And then we'll be able to use those inside our envelopes. Here's how you make your envelope. You're going to take our old prototype that I said a hundred times I didn't need. You're going to lay it in the center with it shaped like a baseball diamond. See that? Then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure it's as straight as you can make it. And then you're going to fold in the side, fold in the other side. And it's not straight at the bottom. Come on, buddy. This paper seems thin until you start trying to fold it into something like this. And as teeny tiny as it is, it does not like to play. It would rather fight me than do anything. Which is nothing compared to wait till you see what happens to me with that twine. Okay, then you're just going to fold down the top. You're probably thinking to yourself right now, that's one ugly envelope. Yeah, well, right now it is because we haven't done everything we need to do to it. Okay, do you saw you saw what we did? We put the we put our piece in the inside. Now, when you get your paper cutting scissors, your little snips, and you're going to cut away these corners. And I kind of try and make the corner um, curved as it goes up to it if I can because it, you want it to look decent. And if it's not even, like the, you know, one, one side's longer than the other, almost all of it is going to be hidden because, you know, how an envelope folds over itself. I don't think you're going to have that many concerns about that. But if you do, you can always mess with it until you like it. So, what we're going to do now, I used wet glue, and I'm just using um, this Essentials by Tonic. Jeez, I thought I glued those to each other. And then you're going to put a little bit of glue in the center, and then fold that down. Did I tell you I rounded my corners of these? If I didn't, I'm sorry, I did do that. But um, I have a couple corners here that I guess I didn't round. No, I rounded the corners on the other one. Let me just cut and round these corners, and then I'll do it on the other ones. We'll round the corners. Sometimes I just lose my mind. Okay. Then all we're going to do then is put some glue 
under that. The trickiest part about this process for me is making sure that I've got everything, um, I, that I've got my um, twine wrapped around it and that uh, my envelopes fit on my, in, first that my sentiment fit in my envelope and secondly that my um, sentiment didn't look stupid because I have a problem with that too. Okay, so our very first one, I think I'm going to use, should I use this one with that one? Yeah, I think I will. Corner rounder. Now is when I'm going to get my corner rounder. In my last couple videos I rounded corners, I showed this. It's a uh, I'm so sorry, I just do not know how to pronounce this. Kadomaru Pro. That's what I'm going with. I know I sound like I'm a first grader, but I'm going with it anyway. And I can round uh, more than one piece of this at a time because it's very thin paper compared to, you know, like cardstock. It's not really that thick. These are my other two envelopes. We just want to make sure all of our corners around it if we can. And the reason I go, I'm going to go back to this corner rounder, the reason that I like this is it has a small, medium, and large corner rounder. So if you want large rounded corners, then you have that option. If you have a teeny tiny piece of paper and you want to round that, you use the small one. So it really is nice for that. And I, uh, I have really been happy with this. One of my viewers told me about it. I'm sorry, I can't remember who you are, and I apologize. I wish I could remember. Okay, let's go to these. So I just kind of cut these out quick with a paper trimmer because I did a bunch of them. And all I'm going to do is wet glue them to their papers. And that glue does not want to come out. I could round these corners with the, the um, small corner uh, rounder, but I kind of like them the way they looked like this. And this one's a little long on one side. And I'm going to make sure I don't do the wrong um, one so I end up putting the same color note in the same color envelope. I'm trying to mix up my envelopes so they're all kind of cute together. I'm going to make the, uh, do the other two envelopes and then what I'm going to do is come back and we'll put everything together because I don't think you're going to want to watch me do this stage because it's kind of repetitive. Um, you've already seen the envelope and that's what all I'm going to be doing is making two more envelopes. So I'll be back in a minute. So I made my envelopes and I, the first time I did this, I had all kinds of problems trying to remember which one I put in which envelope. So when I glued the envelopes down, I had to make sure they were in the right order. So this one is my first one. I'm going to put them in an order this time. So this is second and this is third. Then, so we have those ready to go. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to punch a hole in each of our little open things. And what I like to do is I like to take a marker or a pencil and I put approximately where I want my little hole to be punched. So here's what you do. You're going to take it, put it in your, this is my hole puncher. It just does this little wee hole. Look how bad my nails are looking now. Good thing I just polished them myself and can get rid of this mess. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in so that you can see the little hole that the that's there from the pencil. And you just pop it out. Get rid of that little piece. Second verse. Same as the first. Oops, almost punched that out in the wrong spot because I bumped it. Come on. And last but not least. Okay, so we've got those. What I did with my twine, and this really helped me, learned a bad lesson on this, is to cut a really, really long piece for each one. These are probably two feet long, or I mean, they are really long. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to do this. This is what made it easy for me the first time. I put my open in the front about 
probably halfway and in the front is the back of the, the envelope because the back is what I'm going to have facing the person who gets the card. So we're going to wrap this piece around it. We're going to take this piece and wrap it around twice, well, all the way around once, and then we're going to tie them both. You want to make sure your twine that you use is tight enough that the envelope is closed because that's the only way you're closing your envelope is with this um, bow. All right, so I'm just going to make my bow a little bit shorter. And, you know, I obviously I don't need as much twine as I, I started with, but the problem is, is if I didn't, if I didn't start with a really long piece, I ended up with struggling really badly to get this done. Well, I'm doing the second one now. I've found that twine is not your best friend, or not my best friend anyway. On the front with the open, once more around with that one, and then we tie them both. You really need to make sure at this point that they're tight. And I'm going to have Rich just uh, either fast forward or blur out this part so you don't have to wait for me to tie two more of these. And okay, so they are in order like that. So let's stamp our sentiment in the inside. And I think I'm going to go with May happiness be yours today and always. And I'm going to put that in this blue denim color. I might put some washi tape or some ribbon in this one. Because I think I have some really pretty washi tape. Okay. There's that. I'm going to close that for now. And I'm going to do my... Oh, look, I got some blue ink in the inside. Don't worry, we'll get that out in a minute. I must have it, yeah, on my thumb. Well, now she's got my thumbprint in case she needs it. You never know. All right, I'm hoping that I'm going to glue these down in order. Or they're wrong again. And I'm just going to put um, a row on each side. And what I did before is I kind of just picked a spot that I thought was kind of right for size-wise. I didn't want to glue on the um, twine because I figured if I glued on the twine, she'd have a hard time getting it off, you know, getting the, the um, opening it, I think. She could just either have her daughter cut the twine for her, or she can cut the twine, but I think she should be able to do fine. Ooh, got a little glue coming off that one. And there's that. Then, what I did was, I have a stamp set from Peg Stamps that I've been meaning to use to make a a um, card. It's called The Sweet Song of Spring, and I used one of the stamps for it on the other one, but I thought on this one I might use two. One in the dark pink color and one in the blue. Gina K color. I'm going to go with bubble gum pink. And the other stamp is going to be in the blue denim. Because the, the um, sprig that comes with it looks like this is bigger, I'm going to use it first I'm going to stamp it like I did with the other one, just kind of randomly on the edges. Then I'm going to take this little flower, very little flower, and I'm going to stamp it on both sides of this sprig and if you've never used these there's a line at the bottom and that tells you exactly where the bottom of the stem is and if you go off the top that's okay because that's how it works sometimes 
There's that. Then I think I'm going to just put some random flowers here and there. Okay, and then um, in the inside we'll put, let's put the stamp on the back that I can't find. It's right here, right in front of my face. And I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to get an envelope from my Mead 30 envelopes, press and seals. These are the ones we're using. People wanted me to make some bigger cards, 5 by 7s and this size. And so I said, sure, I'll make bigger cards. I'm on board. And then we're going to stamp this with the same two stamps we used before, which are both from this Sweet Song of Spring stamp set. So I'm just going to put some of these kind of straight up and down. Oh, I put a couple on the front. I just put one in the front, although it is kind of a big envelope. Put three. Okay. That takes care of those. If I close it, then I won't stamp in it, right? We all know me. There's a good chance I'll stamp in it anyway. That ought to do it. Put a couple more. Like at the very top so people will think it's meant to be there. I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media. And I hope you'll give this little envelope process a try and put them on cards because I think it's lots of fun. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.